Question 6, Part A. On figure 6.1, sketch the current voltage graph of a filament lamp and explain its shape. Pay attention here that we are specifically asked to draw for a filament lamp. According to Ohm's law, voltage equals to current times its resistance. The resistance is the gradient of the graph and voltage is directly proportional to its current. The IV graph for a resistor is very simple. The current is proportional to the potential difference. This is because the resistance is constant. For a filament lamp, the relationship is more complicated. The current increases at a proportionally slower rate than the potential difference. So on figure 6.1, you can draw like this. This is because the current causes the filament lamp to heat up. As the filament lamp gets hot, its resistance increases. This opposes the current, causing it to increase at a slower rate. Question B, figure 6.2 shows an electric circuit. Part 1, calculate the reading on the voltmeter. We are given two different power sources. The first one is 12 voltage and the other is 3 voltage. So for the anti-clockwise direction of current, it will be 12 voltage. And for the clockwise direction, it will be 3 voltage. The potential difference here is higher, meaning that the resultant voltage would be in this direction at 9 voltage. And the reason why the current will only flow in this direction is because there is a diode here and the current will only flow in this direction. This diode is placed opposite of the current flow, therefore there will be no current flowing in this direction. So the potential difference here would be 9 voltage. Part 2. Calculate the current in the 4.2 resistor. So let's first identify the information that we have. So far, we know that potential difference is 9 voltage. We are asked to find the current and we know that the resistance is 4.2 ohms. So this is pretty straightforward. According to Ohm's law, V is equal to I times R. So rearranging the formula, we will get a current flow of 2.1 and the units are ampere. Part 3. Determine the current in the 2.1 resistor. This is the 2.1 resistor. Since the resultant potential difference was anti-clockwise, the current will only flow through the 4.2 resistor because diode only allows the flow of current to go in one direction. The current will not be able to go here because the diode is reverse biased. If you still do not understand, please do some revision on diode and how it's responsible for its current flow. Okay, since there are no current flowing in this 2.1 ohm resistor, the current would be zero. Part 4. Determine the reading on the emitter. So there is an emitter placed here and previously we calculated that the current flow in this resistor is 2.1 amperes. In a series circuit, the current is the same value at any point of the circuit, meaning that the current here on the emitter will also be 2.1 amperes. Part 4. Calculate the electrical power transfer in the 4.2 resistor. Let's first list down all the information that we have. We are looking to find power and we have voltage, current and resistor. These are some formulas related to power. We do not have energy or time, but we have current and voltage, therefore we can use this formula. And the answer is 19 watts. Do not forget that your final answer should always be in two significant figures and you must write your units. Question 7, Part A. Figure 7.1 shows the electric field pattern around point X. Part 1. On figure 7.1, draw an arrow to indicate the direction of the force on a negative point charge placed at point Y. A charged object creates an electric field around itself. In the question here, we are given that the arrow is pointing outwards, meaning that this must be a positive charge. And a negative point charge is placed at Y. The direction of the force would go inwards like this. Part 2. State what is the point at X to produce the field pattern shown in figure 7.1. So at point X, it is a positive point charge. Question B. A piece of plastic is charged positively by friction. State what charge transfers occur during this process. When discussing on charge transfers, you have to remember that only electron ions, which are the negative ions, can move. Initially, the piece of plastic had equal amount of positive and negative ions. 
If the piece of plastic becomes positive ion, it only means that there are no longer electrons in the plastic and this is because the electrons have been transferred during the friction. So you can explain this by saying that the plastic becomes positively charged because of the frictional force which causes the electrons to be transferred out from the cloth. Question C. Explain how the structure of an electrical conductor differs from the structure of an electrical insulator. An electrical conductor means that the object can conduct electricity. An electrical insulator means that for an object to be able to conduct electricity, it must have free moving electrons so that it can carry the charges from one point to another point. Question 8 Part A Figure 8.1 shows the single turn coil of a simple direct current DC motor. When the question is discussing about DC motor, the first rule that you have to remember is we are going to be applying the left hand Fleming rule and the right hand rule will be for an AC generator. Part 1. Explain the direction of the turning effect as seen by an observer at O. As we can see, the current is flowing in this direction. So it will flow in this direction and then come back this way. So the current flows inwards on the left hand side and outwards on the right hand side. Let's first find out the direction of the coil on the left side. According to the left hand Fleming rule, your index finger represents the magnetic flow direction, which is from north to south. Hence your finger is pointing from north to south like this. And your current is flowing inwards, so the middle finger is going inwards. And in this position, your thumb is pointing upwards, meaning that the motion of this wire is pointing upwards. If this is going upwards, it will be opposite on the other hand. So over here, on the right side, it will be downwards. This here will give us a clockwise direction. Stating the direction will only give you one mark. For the second mark, you can say the reason is because on the left side, it's pointing upwards and on the right side, it's pointing downwards. Part 2. The coil is replaced by an otherwise identical new coil with three turns and the same current in the coil. State how the turning effect compares with the turning effect in part 1. Now the turning effect depends on a several factors. The current flow, its magnetic field, and the number of turns of coil. To produce a stronger turning effect, we can increase the current, use a stronger magnet, or increase the number of turns of coil. So over here, we are increasing the number of turns of coil, meaning that the turning effect will get stronger. Part 3. A third coil is identical to the coil in part 1, except that its resistance is three times greater. The potential difference across the coil is the same as the potential difference in part 1. State how the turning effect compares with the turning effect in part 1. So the modification here is that the resistance increased by 3 times. According to Ohm's law, current is inversely proportional to its resistance. If the resistance increases, the current flow will decrease. As explained previously, when current is increased, the turning effect becomes greater. So oppositely, if the current is decreased, the turning effect will also decrease. Question B. Figure 8.2 is a voltage time graph showing the output of a simple AC generator at time T0, T1, T2, and T3. Figure 8.3 is an end view of the plane of the coil of the generator at time T0. The coil is rotating clockwise. So let me first explain what does this represent. Axis of rotation means it's in the center and terminal A over here and terminal B is over here like this. So if the coil was in this position, you would see it like this. And figure 8.3 here is showing the axis of rotation when the coil is in this position. That's why the terminal A is here and B is like this. Now let's look into our question. Part 1. Draw an end view of the position of the plane of the coil at time T1. Include the labels of A and B. Okay, we need to find out the end view of the plane at T1. We know that at T0, this is the position of the coil. Since the coil is rotating clockwise, at T1 at maximum voltage, the coil will be at a horizontal position. So A here will now move over here and B has rotated to shift over here. 
So if the position of the plane was such, the end view will look like this. Part 2. Draw an end view of the position of the plane of the coil at time T2. Include the labels of A and B. Okay, now let's see what is the position of the plane at T2. At T2, the voltage is zero, meaning that the position of the coil must definitely be in a vertical position. So we just have to find out the terminal of here and here. T2 here is one complete rotation starting from T0, meaning that it would have come back to its original position. So it will be the same as how it began, A at the top and B at the bottom. So the end view of the position of the plane will look like this. Part 3. Draw an end view of the position of the plane of the coil at time T3. Include the labels of A and B. Okay, so at time T3, the voltage is maximum. The coil must be at a horizontal position. This peak is on the negative region, meaning that it will be opposite from the positive peak. So if it was BA, it will be opposite right now. A over here and B over here. So the end view of the position of the plane will look like this. Question 9. Part A. For each application of radioactive isotopes, state and explain which type of radioactive emissions is suitable and suggest an appropriate half-life for the isotope. Part 1. Household Smoke Alarm First of all, let's understand how does smoke alarm work. In a smoke alarm detector, in one end you will have the radioactive emission. On the other hand, here you've got the sensor. So as long as the sensor continuously receives the emission from the radioactive material, it will be fine. In case of fire taking place, there will be smoke. When the smoke blocks the emission reaching the sensor, that's when the alarm starts to ring. So the type of radioactive emission that should be used here should be something which could be easily blocked. And an emission which is easily blocked is an alpha particle. Alpha particles are not very penetrating, just smoke could block the emission from reaching the sensor. As for the half-life, any value from 10 years to 500 years is an acceptable answer. Next, part 2. Measuring the thickness of aluminium strips produced in a factory. So the same thing. Let's understand the principle. The idea is the same. You must have a continuous radioactive emission that will reach the sensor. A roller will push through the aluminium to go through the sensor. So of course the sensor here is set of how much emission it should receive. If it's a little bit more or a little bit too less, that's when the sensor will start to beep and you will know that the thickness here is not the right diameter. Based on your marking scheme, any number of years is acceptable for the half-life. So I'm going to put 50 years here. Question B. Lead 208 has the highest nuclear number of a stable isotope of lead. Explain why lead is radioactive. Remember, radioactive is due to unstable number of neutrons and protons. In a nucleus of an atom, it contains protons and neutrons. When there are too many numbers of neutrons, the atom becomes unstable and it will decay to reduce the number of neutrons. This is what radioactive means. Question C. State two different sources of background radiation. There are many answers for this and you can choose two. Question 10. A. Part 1. State what is represented in space physics by the symbol H0. H0 is the Hubble constant. This is a pretty simple question. I hope you are familiar with your new chapter of space physics. If you're not, you can watch a video that I have uploaded on this topic. Part 2. Write down the equation that defines H0 in the terms of speed that a far galaxy is moving away from the Earth and its distance from the Earth. So the equation is Hubble constant equals to speed over distance. Part 2. The numerical value of H0 is 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 18. State the unit of Hubble constant. So the unit here is seconds. As long as you know the theory, you should be able to answer all these three questions very easily. Part 3. Use the value of H0 to determine and estimate for the age of the universe in seconds. Okay, to estimate the age of the universe, we can find it by the inverse of H0. So just substitute the value. This will be your final answer. Question B. State when cosmic microwave background radiation was formed and where we detect it come from. 
Again, I have a video to explain all this theory, you can watch it to understand further. Cosmic microwave background radiation was formed since the Big Bang and we can detect it from all points in the space. Alright, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope it was worth your time. If it was, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.